The magnificent Warrumbungle National Park is located in the northwest of New South Wales, about 30 kilometres from the town of Coonabarabran. The National Park offers spectacular scenery, iconic bushwalks and an abundance of native wildlife. And for those of us with an interest in astrophotography and astronomy, the National Park sits within an international dark sky park, which means almost zero light pollution and really dark skies, which is perfect for looking at and photographing the night sky. The main camping area in Warrumbungle National Park is Camp Blackman, which has three separate areas. I stayed in Camp Blackman number two and had fabulous views of the surrounding mountains from my camping site. The Warrumbungle National Park Visitor Centre is located on the road leading to Camp Blackman. The Information Centre has knowledgeable and helpful staff that can provide information on everything to see and do in the National Park, including the various camping options and walking trail info and maps. There are lots of static displays and interactive displays with information on everything from the local geology, fauna and flora and local indigenous history and even the catastrophic bushfire that devastated the park in 2013. Bungle National Park. I've come here to do some astrophotography. It's Australia's first international dark sky park, of course, so for those of us interested in astronomy and astrophotography, it's, uh, it's, it's great to be at somewhere like this. Unfortunately, it's, it's cloudy and also blowing an absolute gale for the last two days, so haven't had any chance to do any astrophotography as yet. But anyway, I thought today I'd just go for a quick walk along this Wombolong uh, nature trail. A really short walk, not far from where I'm camping at Camp Blackman. Tara Cave's walk. It's about 1.8 kilometres each way, so 3.6 kilometre round trip. Should be pretty easy, I think it's pretty flat. Um, and looking forward to see what's at the other end. I've made it up to Tara Cave, the last bit of the walk uh, is a little bit not steep but um, it's definitely uphill. Uh, the cave's all caged off as you can probably see in the background there which is unfortunate but that's just the way it is. And the interpretive sign there explains about some of the markings inside the cave on the rocks is where they used to sharpen their tools and axes and things like that so it's really quite interesting. And on the way up the last bit of the walk up here, really nice spectacular views back out over the uh, National Park, back towards those mountain ranges. 
um, back near the visitor centre. Anyway, really nice, spectacular walk, really worthwhile doing. Heading up to the Grand Fire Tops and the Bread Knife. It's a nice long walk, it's about 14.5 kilometres return. Very steep apparently as well, but um, by all accounts, the views from the top are quite spectacular. So I'm uh, really looking forward to getting stuck into it. Hopefully, there will be um, very worthwhile. Just made a short little detour off the main track to spy review the lookout just off 150 metres off the main track. It's a little bit of a steep climb to get up here, but the view from here is really nice. You can just see the two two main peaks anyway that they're heading for, Bread Knife and the Grand Tops. Pretty happy, pleased to say that I've made it all the way to the top. It's a pretty hard hike for me anyway, with my age and my fitness level. But really pleased that I've got up here anyway, and the view from up here is just astounding. Even it's a shame it's cloudy, but the um, yeah, the outlook from up here is just spectacular. Imagine what it'd be like on a beautiful clear day. And anyway, I've made it, that's the main thing. Another one off the bucket list.
Finding Spring Observatory is located on the eastern edge of the National Park, around about 27 kilometres from Coonabarabran. There are dozens of telescopes dotted around the mountaintop, including Australia's largest optical telescope, the Anglo-Australian Telescope, which has a massive 3.9 metre diameter mirror. The visitor centre has a heap of static and interactive displays with information on each of the different telescopes that are in use at Sighting Spring and their different functions. There is also a stack of information on astronomy, astrophotography and space in general. There are a couple of tours available for the general public at Siding Spring. I went on the tour of the Anglo-Australian Telescope which took about an hour and a half and was really amazing. We even got the opportunity to walk around the walkway on the outside of the dome at the top and the views from up there were spectacular. I found Siding Spring Observatory to be a fascinating place to visit and I highly recommend the visit there. If you enjoyed this video please hit the like button and consider subscribing to the channel.